Well, uh, good evening, everyone, and thanks very much for uh, attending the session. I know it's the last session; it's the second day, so uh, we will we will try to make it as uh, beneficial to you guys as possible. Uh, my name is Kash Iftikhar. I run Worldwide Sales Biz Dev and Services here at Plum Grid. And this panel is actually really unique. And uh, when we were thinking about this uh, this session, uh, we were thinking about bringing people from different parts of uh, the world to share their experiences. That, I think, is one thing that is unique about this uh, session. Uh, the other is that OpenStack is disrupting a lot of technology uh, models. And the other thing it's disrupting is a lot of business models, how different system integrators, resellers, and also technology companies are offering services to their customers. So we'll, we'll go across the globe here and get some perspectives from this uh, panel. And uh, then we'll take some questions, OK? So um, why don't we start off uh, uh, with, uh, with going from left to, I guess, left to right. Okay. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, and uh, you each have uh, a, a lot of history as people and a little bit about the company, so everybody gets a perspective which region, what you do, and what have you been doing in the past. Okay. Hi, I'm Mike Mesco. Uh, I work for Onyx Incorporated. We're a system integrator, uh, reseller, uh, work in the US uh, in the federal space and some commercial. Uh, my background is a uh, network admin, Linux admin, was a virtualization engineer for a while. And then uh, when OpenStack came around, uh, pretty much identified that as the way to go. Started in on Diablo and compiled a lot of stuff from Trunk back then and have kind of worked up to current. And uh, it, I'm really glad to be here. Good seeing you guys in the audience. My name is Rodrigo. Um, I was the first employee of a company called Mercado Libre that is like eBay for Latin America. So basically at Mercado Libre, we implemented OpenStack in 2011, a long time ago. We have a huge case of what we did at Mercado Libre. And, and I worked there for 14 years. Then I decided to create a company called Novelio where basically we help companies from South America, Latin America, to implement OpenStack and use OpenStack. So, so basically, the company was created by, by myself and, and the whole Cloud Builder team from Mercado Libre. So, so we know OpenStack from since 2010, I think. So we have a huge experience in that. OK, uh, my name is uh, Ruth Harmson. I'm a founder and CEO of Fairbanks, which uh, is a, a, a very nice name, but it's in the Netherlands, in uh, Europe, in uh, EMEA. Um, uh, I, th I would like to thank you, Cash, to be here um, uh, and to tell you a bit more uh, about, uh, about our organization. Fairbanks uh, is uh, uh, in the European market in the, in the Netherlands for about 10 years now. And uh, in 2010, 2011, uh, uh, because of the, uh, uh, the the problems into into the market, uh, we started with uh, VMware uh, uh, to do implementations, storage implementations. And in 2010, 2011, we start with uh, uh, on the marketing side with the Blue Ocean strategy, with uh, within uh, our management team, and there we uh, decided to uh, uh, look more to uh, open source. At the same time. Uh, we met people from uh, Rackspace and the NASA and also from Nebula. And there we uh, had the first uh, contact with, uh, with OpenStack and we were, well, uh, very, uh, very happy to see uh, that uh, technology. And we decided uh, to do more on that. And uh, well, in the meantime, uh, we did a lot of implementations uh, already. Uh, hi, my name is Yuji from Nesik. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. I taught the in, uh, Japanese to him, so. <laughs> and then, so uh, my name is Yuji. Anyway, uh, my from, uh, from Nesic. Uh, Nesic is a system integrator, and then doing the uh, uh, distribution business for Japanese IT market. And then uh, I was a network system engineer before coming to the US. It was two years ago, but uh, right now my title is a business development. So I'm looking for a good product or services for Japanese IT market. And then two years ago, I found PlumGrid in the Sunnyvale. And then we started the for cloud business two years ago with PlumGrid. And then still, we are a distributor. And that's all. <laughs> OK. Hello. Um, I'm also 
very honored to be here. My name is Minehiko Nohara from Makunika Networks, Japan. Um, the, we are quite similar. I'm, um, Makunika Networks is the uh, distributor. Our business model is to um, find the very new technology from abroad to bring it back to Japan and adapt it to Japanese market. I've been working for the virtualized technology for past few years and now I'm a um, cloud product dedicated engineer. Yeah, just a little bit of color here. So uh, I think, uh, you know, you see uh, our friends from uh, Japan here, we've been spending a lot of time in uh, Tokyo. I, as you know, the next OpenStack Summit is going to be in Tokyo. And uh, I think the markets across the world, especially you know, in Japan and other Asian countries, also in South America and, and Europe, they're seeing a huge transition. Uh, they've been using certain technologies, but I think there's a move and a desire to acquire uh, new assets, new technologies that are very disrupting uh, along the cloud, cloud area. So uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Maybe, Nohara-san, I start with you. If you can give us your sense because you've been in this market, right, and you work with a lot of customers. Give us a little bit sense from your vantage point, the state of OpenStack in the customers you meet and in uh, Japan in general. Well, <coughs> um, the virtualization market is very growing in Japan at this moment. I think the, the data is a bit old, but at the beginning of last year, it was said about 50% of the companies are already start virtualizing their servers. But um, in fact, the most of them are uh, 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 the, uh, built by vSphere environment. Um, but um, the most of them who are using vSphere, it's also considering to move on to OpenStack environment because um, not only cost, but um, they want to get rid of the um, uh, vendor locking. That that is very serious for the the especially for the cloud provider people and enterprise people, and so um, I think it, it will getting change. How, how to say the the market is a bit changing now in okay. that time. Uh, so the open stack the aspect. And then, uh, as you know, the next OpenStack Summit is in Japan, right? And then there are a lot of Japanese in this conference as well. And then I heard it from the Canonical friends. And then Canonical had the private party on the last Sunday. And then 20% of the attendees were Japanese. It means there are a lot of Japanese are interested in the OpenStack. And then actually, the, uh, we, uh, the NESIC, uh, deployed first uh, Prom grades deployment to the our customer. Uh, in, it is the no POC, it's not trial, it's the production use case. Uh, the company name is the uh, NTT Smart Connect. Uh, they are doing the service provider uh, business in the west of Japan. And then I'm honored to uh, deploy that Prom grade and open stack to them. And then uh, uh, here is the representative from the NTT Smart Connect. I want to introduce the to you guys. The he is Inoue-san. So. Inoue-san, can you show your face to the audience? And then uh, I think the, uh, he is the one of the hottest the social uh, solution architect in Japan. I mean, uh, he is using the uh, he likes to use the cutting edge or the new technology for their business and then for their infrastructure. And then uh, he is looking for the good or new technology for their environment to compete with someone. So. If you are, if you have the good uh, idea or the good product, you can uh, you can introduce your the product to him. Yeah, he will be happy, I think. And maybe uh, you can expand on that. Why why do you see OpenStack in in Japan? Why because there are other options as well. Yeah, the other option for the OpenStack is the same. Uh, the uh, it's similar the uh, opinion with Nohara-san, but the uh, the. the I think that there is a two two reason. The one is the cost effective, and then uh, uh, and then the flexibility and the scalable. But uh, I'm not sure uh, we can deploy the open stack the cheaper than the VMware or not right now. So we are still thinking about that thing. So we are looking for that good solution still. That's where you come in and help. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. 
Um, <coughs> well, if you if you uh, uh, look to OpenStack in uh, in the Netherlands, um, uh, uh, we we have uh, the, in, we also hear it here the discussion about the pets and the kettles. Uh, if you look to the the companies in the Netherlands, we have more pets than uh, than, than than kettles. Um, so what we see is that the the hosting companies and uh, the multi-tenant uh, companies. The media companies, uh, uh, they are very interested uh, in, in OpenStack. And um, uh, I think if you look to, and, and I speak with a lot of uh, CIOs, and uh, now after uh, the problems we had in the, mar in the market, and uh, uh, the business is going well also in Europe and also in the Netherlands, uh, we see that the, the ability to uh, bring new technology into the companies uh, is is also in in the Netherlands uh, number one, and of course, vendor lock-in is uh, is one of the items, and also uh, the price uh, is an, is is an issue. Uh, but I really believe that uh, uh, innovate new technology is one of the issues uh, uh, we uh, well we see in uh, in our country. So Latin America is something similar. What is happening? So. We go to customers, we go to enterprise, and we typically we see VMware, VBlock, and and ISPs trying to use VBlocks and and try to implement it for years, and they are locking. I mean, it's not easy to move ahead from from that, and also the functionality is, is very close. So we go and say, okay, we we we, we know OpenStack, we implemented OpenStack in in different. Companies, we have a good case that people know us from Mercado Libre, and we have the team that did working for you. And, and typically, they like us. They sometimes are a little afraid of OpenStack because they think that OpenStack is terribly diffic difficult, that maybe it's correct. But we are building tools to help those companies to implement OpenStack. So the first thing we did is we know that OpenStack is. is Anybody can download OpenStack and install it, right? But it's not the same for an ISP, for a company that wants to put things at production. So what we is, we create a tool that deploy OpenStack ready for production very fast, like 20 minutes. So so then wh what we see with, with people and that the first impression of OpenStack is critical. I mean, because they used to see VMware, and they, VMware next, 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 and everything works. And OpenStack, you need to understand perfectly what you are doing. So for, for us, the first impression is critical, and we are deploying tools on top of OpenStack to help the users to use OpenStack in, in a way very easy, like, like many wizards, set up your cloud. So that is how we go to a customer and help them to, to see OpenStack. Uh, so first impression, is, is critical for us, and, and and we are going to ISPs, to enterprise, and they really like what we are doing, and, and and we are doing very good business with them. Okay, so I want to make it a little bit interactive. Uh, if you have any questions, I can pause and take because I think you have a, a variety of uh, people here from different regions, different experiences. So, any questions before I proceed? OpenStack generally is not a shy crowd, so. <laughs> Yeah, please. So let's repeat the question. Uh, the question is that uh, OpenStack requires a specific skill set, which is investment, especially from these uh, integrators and resellers, investing in resources before they can provide services to their customers. So in the people and the return compared to the existing technologies that are available. Go ahead. OK. Good yeah. question. Yeah. Uh, very good question. So so, so <coughs> we know how, how much is VMware. We know also that you, with VMware, we don't pay only a license. We pay all the support services and many, many, many other things. So so for us, we know perfectly OpenStack from long, long time ago. So for us, if you have the right people, people that really know OpenStack from long time, investing in people is, is what we are doing. It's, it's the way to go. 
is is easy, uh, especially on Latin America that that is completely different from from US. And so so yes, we did the cost analysis and we decided that we're gonna make tools to help users use OpenStack. And we 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 put a lot of effort in UI, UX, many things to to know how to help users to to have production environments very easily. So so even that is really really cheaper compared to to VMware. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, in our design, we um, we built some of the support and help you get started engineering services into kind of our capacity pricing. So it's it's upfront. You realize what the comparative expense is going to be. I've got a plan for a year to get this in production supported, and then the customer's in a position to decide, do they want to start hiring in their OpenStack expertise? How much do they need? What does their support level, you know, day-to-day -day operations level look like? Or do they want to continue using us for that as they are still figuring it out? Um, one thing that we find customers are really looking at more these days is they had an kind of an easy mode with the later versions, the more recent versions of vSphere. It, it's quite figured out. It works very well. Um, with OpenStack, there's an engineering effort. There's, there's a lot of upfront, and that investment pays off at scale. You've paid a lot of money for vSphere to have a really well done, figured out product, but I don't need to pay for that engineering on rack number 25. Two years. Yeah. But I think, uh, just to comment on that, I think that's a good point. There's always a comparison here. Uh, I think the data is also moving really fast. I think figuratively, uh, just uh, from a plum grid perspective, I, we started here, you know, two and a half, three years ago, uh, knocking, met like three, four hundred customers. The data is changing rapidly every single six months. I can tell you in the last six months, the, the 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 sophistication of the tools that are being built, and the ease that different uh, uh, you know uh, sort of the providers are bringing in from an OpenStack perspective, from a network virtualization perspective, it's changed quite a bit. It's it's shrinking significantly. But I think the the clear. I mean, for example, I, I we used to go to uh, Tokyo. Everybody used to talk about cloud stack. Uh, but I think if you, even if you look at that, that's a click 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 deploy kind of a model. But that is changing. Right? Because it's very clear that the community is converging certainly around OpenStack. And that's at least our humble perspective with the sliver of the customers that we, we meet. Anybody else want to chime in? Okay. Maybe another question. I think questions are much fun. Anybody else? Well, maybe I, I can Go ahead. Uh, give, uh, give an answer to, to your question. <coughs> because uh, uh, what we did, we started as, a, as an IT company 10 years ago. Uh, do implementations of storage, uh, implementation of VMware, uh, help customers to virtualize their uh, uh, data center. Um, uh, but we saw that uh, in, in, in 2006, uh, we were uh, one of the earliest companies in the Netherlands who, uh, who did the implementation with customers. For instance, uh, Citrix at that time was very difficult to virtualize. We said, we said to each other, we, we can, and it was one big customer in the Netherlands, and uh, well, I'm a, I'm a salesman, so I said we, we we can manage that, and at the end we did. But uh, uh, at that time, you you saw, and that that was our problem within our company, uh, because the competition was very big. So the the customer uh, can choose uh, a lot of companies, and they can. Uh, so we saw prices for the consultancy uh, fails or drops down, uh, prices on, on on hardware. If you are a reseller you uh, earn your money also on, on the hardware. So we saw everything increases. So we said to each other, we have to change and go to another model, go to another market. And that was our uh, uh, blue ocean strategy to change. And now uh, for a consultant, uh, uh, and your question was, how long does it take? For us, it was uh, a road for two years. But now we have consultants and do uh, the job for our customers for uh, a much better price. Yeah. And that's and that's and that for us uh, brings us more. And and uh, uh, when you are uh, uh, coming, uh, when you are one of the first companies, and we we are, uh, uh, we we are uh, in the Netherlands, the uh, 
uh, uh, well, how do you say it, the community ambassador for uh, uh, the foundation. So, uh, well, it brings us it brings us a lot. That's yeah. while I was uh, thinking and we was talking is uh, you know we, we as a company have timed the time it takes to install a fully functional OpenStack environment. Just maybe gives you some idea. It used to be days and probably weeks, a uh, year before last, and, and you know, now uh, roughly we timed it. Literally, we had a timer uh, for about 1,500 core environment. We were able to bring it up in less than an hour. So everything was automated. Everything was Ansible, PowerShell, scripts, boom, done. So I think it's becoming much, much easier. You have to plan for it, but it's not like VMware is a piece of cake. Um, so let's maybe talk a little bit about the specific use cases that you guys are seeing for your customers, and maybe it applies to different people over here. So Mike. So we target the federal sector primarily. And uh, what we're seeing is the, the adage that open source goes with public sector. is It's finally really catching on. We've, we've seen a lot of adoption of open source, but now it's really moving down to the infrastructure level. and the public, center, public sector hosting centers, large data centers are starting to act a lot more like the large commercial hosting centers. They're in competition with them now. You can go get a Amazon for Gov. You know, that's a big competition in a market that gover government to government hosting didn't used to have. So there's now a huge drive and, and a reason to do all this innovation because you want to keep reporting to the same work. You don't want to be sent to another job within the government. Um, it's time for them to start betting, and we're seeing that they're starting to. They're looking at what, where's the innovation happening, where's the community going, where is you know, the next five or 10 years of hosting gonna be, and that's OpenStack. That's pretty, pretty well figured out by the people that are obviously at an OpenStack summit, but everybody else seems to be coming around. We're definitely, leaving the early adopter phase and starting to move into the early majority. And we see that in the federal space as well. And what would be the typical, let's say, uh, use case? Are there still DevOps within federal? I mean, um, whatever see, you can share. Yeah, we see um, DevOps type stuff. Uh, DevOps is, we won't say it's catching on in the federal space yet, but it's on the radar. The idea that there's ops guys and developer guys, it's breaking down. There, there's they're starting to get tired of throwing stuff over the fence when the developers are definitely qualified to go and crank out a few networks, you know, with SDN via Horizon or a script and crank out, you know, a bunch of VMs and then start automating that. Um, ops guys should be moving and in, in concentrating on engineering. And so as that starts to work out, that'll become a bigger use case. We've had some customers that were asking, they're very forward leaning and they're talking about DevOps. Our primary customer in use case is more around um, just IaaS hosting. Like uh, I worked for a place that's kind of um, just a IaaS hosting center government to government. And the, the whole deal is pay X dollars a month, get some VMs, right? They didn't really want anything beyond that. And OpenStack, a perfect fit for that. Okay, real. So what we are seeing in Latin America, so it's e-commerce companies. Uh, they are trying to sh have agility. They are trying to not, not have the IT department as a bottleneck. So they are looking into OpenStack. So for us, e-commerce is very easy because at Numelio we came from an e-commerce, the, the huge e-commerce company in Latin America. Uh, and also we are seeing ISPs that they're trying to build a, a private cloud because you go to an ISP in Latin America, always they talk, we, we have cloud and so on. But when you try to understand how the cloud is set up, it's virtualization, like old style a guy that created the machine and so on and put the IP and so we say there's a different way to do it. We can do it for for less less money than another vendor uh, and we can do it very fast and we can do a POC in 20 minutes and show you what you can have with OpenStack. Uh, and also banks. We are we're seeing banks that they are trying to investigate uh, OpenStack and we are trying to help them 
Because what we see with Bank is they are very structured, very closed, and we say, okay, we can help you guys to create a private cloud very easily and, and very fast and secure. So, but the common denominator is that basically they, they want API driven. So, so they, they want maybe developers create the, the machines without using Horizon or any tool. But others, they, they want to use the, the, the Horizon or what we did. So, so they want agility, speed, and secure. So, so what is what we are seeing in Latin America? Okay. Um, <coughs> the banks uh, is it for quite a while, or, or do you see it's it's coming up uh, now? No, we are a new company. We are a seven months company, and, and at the beginning, when we go to a bank, they said, no, no, open source. We don't like open source, but but. <laughs> <laughs> but then we show them, uh, and, and starting, they are starting to see that OpenStack is only a layer. And then they, they, they are still working on the data center with their own firewalls. Okay. Uh, and they're starting to accept it. We, we have a few banks as a customers. That's we great. are talking with many banks in Latin hear. America. Well, <coughs> in, in the Netherlands, banks are, are, are very anxious on uh, doing uh, uh, OpenStack uh, for the moment. Uh, we really believe. Uh, that uh, uh, the innovation on OpenStack will bring also uh, the opportunity for banks uh, uh, after 2015. I really believe that. Uh, now we saw, uh, we, we see in the Netherlands the, the media companies, uh, they started uh, early to use uh, OpenStack uh, because of uh, uh, the tremendous uh, amount of data uh, they were having. So combination of OpenStack and, uh, for instance, uh, CEF, uh, uh, brought that the media companies uh, were looking for for OpenStack uh, at that time. Yeah, I wanted to talk about you it. Yeah, me, me, yeah, I wanted to talk about the media, but he said so. I need to change the topics, but and then uh, of course no, the, you go ahead, go ahead. Uh, of course, service provider is Speak the your mind. yeah, that's fine. The completely same, so <laughs> the reason. But the uh, almost the service provider in Japan need to compete with the giant, the public cloud provider, kind of the AWS software layer or something like that. So they are looking to change the VM to the OpenStack, and then they need to create strong point or advantage comp compared with them. But recently, I hear that some interesting case. It's a uh, uh, university. The universities in the university, the research institute is the, in the in the research institute. There are a lot of students, right? The, the students uh, want to create the VM for some research, but the the students fail that research, and they need to change the topic, and then they will d delete the VM and then create a new VM or something like that. So the professor cannot the calculate and then uh, the budget and then resource for them hmm. for. So they cannot use the VM or something like that. So the professor want to change to the OpenStack. I heard it. It, it was an interesting thing. So. Well, um, the we are from Japan, so the market is the same. But um, I think the there are three major cases in Japan. It's like um, web serv the web service like the e-commerce and the the providing websites to the customers and the second case is cloud provider and the third case is the private cloud for the uh, um, the development of software and testing the software the for the cloud providers maybe the the same reason for the cost effective to 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 against for the the AWS Maybe the the OpenStack is very imp the important fact, and the for web service providers they are really, I mean, they have several. My customer, our customer has scaled to five thousand hosts that cannot be afforded for with VMware. And then I forgot to say one another sure. topic. And then uh, in Japan, uh, telecommunications carrier, kind of the NTT or something like that, is focusing on to the to use the uh, OpenStack. And then actually, uh, NTT Docomo uh, announced to use the OpenStack for their uh, new carrier NFV. And then he, they will start the 
services the next March or something like that. So the all of the the industry is watching the yeah. open stack. And just to add a little bit more comment in our journey, right, uh, on open stack, I think what we're seeing is specific maturity. Uh, in terms of the use case that are writing on top of the basic IS layer, uh, you know, with clear APIs. Um, and, and, and the other point is that, um, you know, from a uh, region perspective, I think what you will see, uh, because we work with all these, uh, uh, these partners, is it's a different vari variation of maturity. Uh, but where people are really mature, uh, in, in markets, I would say, for example, in the United States, um, certainly the enterprise, I mean, myself, and we, we look at data every six months. In the last six months to a year, enterprise has definitely come up, e-commerce, of course, media. But then the use cases on top of that are very, very specific, right? For example, in Japan, what we see is that IS for service providers is still a big, big concern. But in the United States, for example, you will see use cases on top of it. Can you run a PaaS on top of, uh, of, on top of uh, uh, you know, your OpenStack uh, IS layer? So I think you'll see different levels of uh, maturity, but the convergence definitely is that it's it's moving on the upward trend. Okay. Uh, any any other questions? Yeah. Let's go ahead. Uh, what do we do about support? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What uh, what we did uh, within our <coughs> company, um, uh, uh, we have a good relationship with. Uh, uh, several distros like Red Hat, uh, uh, also HP with Helion, uh, and also uh, Ubuntu. And what we did was we built, uh, well, let's say containers for several industries. Um, uh, if you, for instance, uh, work with uh, with Canonical, uh, 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 y you have the Bootstack. You can do a quick implementation of OpenStack. Uh, there you uh, have, uh, uh, for instance, uh, you can use uh, uh, Plumgrid for the network part. And so for all different businesses, we build uh, several containers, and the support is uh, exactly the same. So that's what we, uh, that's what we, uh, we are doing. And in our case, it's a little different, because in Latin America, Canonical is just starting to go to the market, Red Hat, it's not here, HP is not here. And, and sometimes we, we, what we see is that we cannot trust on Canonical or Red Hat or HP, basically because they are in UK maybe speaking English and we speak Spanish and Portuguese and Latin America. Uh, and, and people want people on site or, or very close, the same culture, the same language. So we do the support. Basically, we install OpenStack, deploy OpenStack on the customer, and we sell a, a, like a service subscription where we support OpenStack and also all the tools that we develop for the user. So, so we are the main contact and point of contact for the user. Uh, in our model, uh, we can do it a little more custom. So with the, what we offer as kind of our starting point is we'll handle the tier one and tier two for anything included in the stack that we would provide. Um, a lot of customers want a tier one on site. They're fine with tier two being remote. They may want 24 seven. If they want that, we'll do that. If they want nine by five, we can work that out too. And then we go back to our various providers, you know, such as Plum Grid or a Canonical or Piston or you know any other provider that needs to be in there. And uh, that's kind of our tier three. So if it's something that we're really stuck on, will escalate to tier three. But generally, we want to have the tier one and tier two as a single point, right? If something's broken on that cloud and it's made out of four or five or eight different pieces and somebody really wanted to have one specific piece, they don't want to have four or five different phone numbers to call. They call us, we get it triaged, we do whatever we can to help them. If it's really broken, then we refer it on to the proper tier three take it back down to them, make sure everything's fixed, and then tier one and tier two follow up, right? Make sure it stayed fixed. And speaking a little bit on, on the uh, Japan side of the house, I think, I think that's a very good question, uh, literally. And I think it wasn't becoming too relevant last year because we were in the POC phase. Everybody wanted to do a POC, right? So yeah, let's do POC and call 15 people. But I think what you're seeing is, and the reason purposely we had uh, th these people on the stage is that 
I don't think so, you know, the distributions can do it all. I don't think so the network virtualization can do it all. I think what we can do is provide with clear defined APIs a very, very simplified way of integrating different pieces together. And I think the, the use case will come from integrators and some sophisticated users themselves. But I think what you have to see is a transition here. You know, these, uh, some of these uh, resellers or system integrators have been traditionally selling hardware. That was the business model, right? Cisco, Juniper, I used to work for Cisco and Dell. That's what they did. But I think what you're seeing is a change. And all of these business models are coming up because they're realizing that the real value that they can provide on top of all these integrations is support. So I think that's a relevant question, and that's why I think you're seeing a shift with, you know, with uh, Novilio with a different model, right? Onyx with a different module, and Fairbanks with different. And for us in Japan in particular, uh, you know, I'm just taking us as an example, right? So we integrate with different distributions, but the reason why we went to Japan with our, with our resellers is because they are the ones who speak the language. They're the ones who will interface. And I think as a community, we have to understand that, right? It's not about 15 components and I will support heavy. It's not gonna work that way. What business models are going to evolve, and VMware and all these ecosystems thrive because they have a very, very healthy system integrated community out there. So I think that, ch that trend and change is happening. Okay. I think it's a good question. Yeah. What we did, as, as, <coughs> as, as I said already, we are the community ambassador for, uh, for OpenStack in, in the Benelux. Uh, we decided to use OpenStack.nl. Uh, to make it very locally, yeah, as what you what you said, yeah. because that's very important. Uh, also, the the Dutch customers, uh, we all can speak English, but it's very uh, good for them to uh, have uh, a contact uh, nearby when there is a problem. And also, we do uh, the support for uh, for our customers. Uh, it depends on 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 uh, all the different uh, 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 products and and uh, uh, containers we uh, we create. Uh, but also for us, it's very important that the customer has a contact nearby. Speak Dutch and uh, very good. Question. Uh, how well does the community integration affect that? <laughs> All right, that would be a question for us. <laughs> so uh, the question was how well is the community doing the integrations and testing, right? I think um, um, it's getting better. And let me answer you. So. Uh, from us, as a, or any other network virtualization provider, as an example, there are other companies in storage doing similar st uh, things in storage. For us, we rely or work with an or integration or orchestration system. In our case, the go-to market is, is OpenStack. And when you lo look at OpenStack, there's an open source version of OpenStack, but I think uh, most of the enterprise that we see or service providers are going with distributions. So now we rely on the distributions to have a framework in which we can plug in. Looks pretty simple, you got Neutron upstream, and that's it. Well, you realize that everybody has their own installer framework that you had to integrate with. And if you look down the value chain, what we want to do is we really do not want to get into the services business. We want to do these integration and pass it on to the value chain, right? I think to answer your question, it's getting much better, much better. And, and, I, and I think I heard something from, from the keynote session, the way where they're evolving the core OpenStack, I think it's going to benefit everyone. But that's an area that uh, I think still needs to be improved. But on the other side, the pieces who are plugging into these orchestration or distributions have to do their job. For example, we run I mean, pipelines throughout 24 by 7. Because if some distribution does some kernel modifications, right, the whole stack breaks. So we are taking that ownership because we don't want these people to be spending hours and hours in front of the customers, burning resources, and not be able to uh, you know, get the stack up and running. But I think these are just transitionary times, and it'll, it'll sort it out himself. Please. Testing, full of stack. Yeah, a normal week for me is I personally deploy OpenStack two times a day. I'm testing this, testing that, benchmarking. I've got something new from a partner like PlumGrid and I need to play it against what I'm proposing to a customer. And uh, I have a bit of a reputation for destructive testing, right? I uh, want it yes. to break for me. I agree. And yeah. he will get a lot of email from <laughs> me if it does break, right? 
So basically us, uh, we, we don't rely on a distribution. Uh, we, we are distribution agnostic, but we our tools are tested with all the open source di distribution. So for us, it's very easy to understand. It's something is changing, and uh, we, we can change it in our tools to develop OpenStack. So, so basically, we don't rely on, on a distribution. We have a tool that connect to OpenStack and download the packages and deploy OpenStack in a really production manner and and do it very, very fast. OK, I think we're running out of time. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. But I would just finish up by saying that we talk a lot about technology, right? And we have multiple sessions. OpenStack uh, adoption is also a business model discussion, right? So a lot of people don't talk about that. But I think that is what the other closed source systems get really well. So I think it's about time we start having that dialogue. And this was a humble attempt to get that conversation going. I'm sure there are many other ideas, but I really appreciate all your time. Hope this was, was valuable to you, and we'll be here to take uh, any further questions. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.